Today's episode of This Week in Startups is brought to you by Squarespace. Use the promo code TWIST12 when signing up to receive a 20% discount for six months. And by GoToMeeting. Sign up for GoToMeeting and use the promo code START to receive your free trial. Hey, everybody. It's This Week in Startups. Today, a very, very special guest, one of my favorite products of all time, Path.com's founder, Dave Morin, is with us. Stick around. What it's all about, man. They said, money is the root of all evil. But funny how it feeds my people. Yeah. We ain't gonna live like equals until we get the money, spend the money, and defeat you. Yeah. Money is the root of all evil. But funny how it feeds my people. Yeah. We ain't gonna live like equals until we get the money, spend the money, and defeat you. Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. It's Jason Calacanis here. Uh, it's This Week in Startups, and we are in San Francisco doing some shows out of the wonderful offices of CNET, CBS Interactive. Thank you to all my friends, uh, Rafe Needleman, Jim Lanzone, uh, and all the great engineers and talent here for helping us out. You know, we didn't have a studio to do these shows out of here, and we are going to set up a hotel room, and CNET came to my rescue, and I truly appreciate that. Today's show is going to be amazing. Um, you guys have uh, seen I've written about Path a year ago, and I fell in love with this product. It was incredibly elegant, well thought out, and really the evolution of um, you know MySpace to Facebook to Path. And it was pretty clear to me that that was going to be the evolution of social networking. And hey, let's be frank, um, a lot of people dissed Path in the early days. 2.0 just came out, and it is... Uh, one of the best products that's been released for mobile ever. And I don't think that's an understatement. I think everybody sort of agrees about that in the industry. It's set a, a whole new benchmark. And I'm really happy to have um, the founder, uh, Dave, with us today. But before we introduce him, I just want to talk about another beautiful, beautiful, elegant product. And you guys know I'm just a total product-driven person. I love gorgeous products with um, a lot of thought put into them. And, and, and products that are designed with emotion uh, and with intelligence and sophistication, and one of those products is Squarespace. That's what I use for the launch site for my personal, um, you know, when I do my personal little editorials. And Squarespace uh, provides 24-hour support for beautiful, professional-looking websites. They've got templates for blogs, photos, galleries, large and small businesses, and a fully-featured iPad app. They are... Uh, literally the best blogging platform out there. And, and, and I know there's other ones. You probably have used Blogger or Movable Type or Typepad. It's time to get off of those services and go use Squarespace. It is awesome. I use it. And as you guys know, you can't uh, partner and advertise in the program unless I actually use the product and love it. And we made a short list. I think it was under 20 products and sold out the advertising for six months from these great products. And, and these are people who don't usually advertise their products because they don't have to. They're that great. They just want to support the show and want to support other entrepreneurs in telling their stories. So it's really special to have Squarespace um, for me to sponsor the program. Go to squarespace.com slash twist and sign up. You'll get 20% off for six months if you use the code twist12. And uh, hey, if you email your receipt to contests at thisweekend.com, we'll send you one of the beautiful This Weekend bags, and you'll get that. Um, and you can't buy it. So... Um, Dave Morin was the 30th employee, I believe, at uh, Facebook and co-founded Path back in February of 2010 with Sean Fanning uh, and Dustin Miro. Miro. Yeah. Miro. Mm -hmm. um, and the product, how would you describe the reception, Dave, you got for 1.0 of the product? <laughs> how would I describe it? Yeah, um, the range. You know, we, we had, it was pretty... Uh, bifurcated in two directions you know there were people um, like you I think that maybe saw the vision and uh, the design that we did and thought it was pretty good yeah um, and then there were people who just absolutely didn't like it right um, and uh, what was that, their that's pretty much how it came down to yeah. um, I think the complaints came down to basically uh, 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 too restrictive you know we, we put a limit in place on the original product um, 50, 50 friends right which is the Dunbar um, number well Dunbar's number is 150 oh 150 but, correct, yeah. um, there's some other research that says that 50 is the next ring in and yeah so, explain that unpack that a little bit what is the research so the research says that um, the maximum number of stable personal relationships that your brain can manage is 150 and huh. it's sort of proven across 
all kinds of things, um, organizational sizes, uh, military units in the Roman army, the American army. Mm. 150 is this really interesting number that exists all over the place in the world. Um, and it just turns out that, um, you know, if you read Dunbar's research, uh, it has something to do with the neural network in our brains and sort of the number of, uh, you know, relationships that the frontal lobe can help you manage. Uh -huh. um, there's all this interesting research, but 150 is kind of this freak of nature. It, ex it exists everywhere. Right. And, um, He's done a lot more research, obviously, into different patterns and social um, networks and things. Is he at a Berkeley or where's he uh, at? Oxford. In, Oxford. In London, yeah. yeah. And uh, 50 is actually the next ring. So uh -huh. it's sort of the number of people that you trust. Right. Uh, and uh, so we started there um, thinking that, uh, you know, that would be a good place to start. It seemed like that, that was one thing that um, it was interesting, actually. We had a lot of people that said this is too restrictive and a bunch of other people that said, please never change it. Um, right. Which was kind of really interesting. I actually expected uh, a much bigger uproar about the number. That turned out to be not the thing I think that uh, most people um, were not happy about. I think the other big bucket of feedback was around just that the product had a lot of conceptual things in it that were um, really interesting. But, you know, some of them added more friction than some people liked. Um, Such as? Uh, we had we tried to innovate around tagging, so right. we uh, had people tags and place tags, and we also had this tag we called a thing, which right. um, was really sort of focused on, you know, people. We were noticing that people were taking a lot of photos of food and things like that, and right. so the idea was sort of well, give people another tag type that right. um, you know enables them to tag the food in a restaurant or you know these types of things, and so we tried to build that, and it was location based and it had a bunch of fancy things in it but the reality was that it was just kind of too complicated for people yeah and um, people were breaking it and some people didn't like it and it's i think like it just generally it too. yeah a lot of hacking going yeah. on people were either using it for titles uh, titles or other 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 uses so why did you when you look back on it adding that feature did you overthink it was that the mistake yeah i think i would actually go a little bit further to say that you know i think we maybe overthought it um, but I also think that we focused more on uh, the the business mm -hmm. rather than the user. Um, uh -huh. We built a lot of those structured data features around, you know, oh, well, someday maybe we'll get into the advertising market. Right. You know? And you'll It'd want be great all the to pizza. have all this structured yeah. data, right? Yeah. And somewhere halfway through building 2.0, we kind of realized this, that, um, you know, there was very little user value in adding more friction there. Right. And so... Um, let's just take it out because um, at the end of the day, you know, users just are trying to put these really important moments of their lives into this um, network that's really meaningful to them. And we're, we were just getting in their way. And so um, pulling that out, I think, was, was another big thing. Um, I think uh, also we had a little bit of pushback just because we were, we were going after um, a much more dense network so we sort of said this is for your close friends and family only mm. and the market hadn't matured far enough yet um, people didn't understand that concept exactly so well like why do i need that i have facebook exactly so people didn't understand the concept but also uh there weren't uh, enough iphones distributed to ah. um to to make that more horizontal strategy work uh, right you know we needed to be on android we needed to be in a variety of different places because your family and close friends aren't necessarily on an iphone and the web maybe or exactly these other things fast forward till now and that's broadly changed we're finding that most people at least in our current market are iphone users or have come over to iphone we're getting customer support after e email after email just saying like yeah i switched to iphone finally you know yep. from blackberry or whatever and that, that that tune is strongly different this year than it was last year yeah, and there was a lot of expectation. Yeah, because you built a lot of key features at Facebook. Yeah, what was yeah. the key feature you built at Facebook? Well, I, I would say the expectation came from both, um, you know, uh, Sean Fanning, and then you know, and Dustin were very involved with Napster. Right. You know, I spent a lot of time at Facebook. Um, the two products I worked on at Facebook were um, the Facebook platform and right. then Facebook Connect. Right. Um, you know, which. Uh, are the two most successful features of the platform. <laughs> I mean, you may not yeah. say that, but I mean, pretty clearly Facebook Connect has become the login system of the internet for better or worse. Some people are critical of that, but it does make authentication flawless on a global basis now. And many people launch services with only one login system, yeah. the one you created, Facebook Connect. Did you know it was going to be that big? Did you guys have that sense? We went through a lot of... Uh... <laughs> 
products at Facebook where we would dream of them coming becoming that big. Right. But would not understand sort of what happened when it did. Ah. You know? <laughs> Shoot <laughs> so there was, first, aim later. Yeah, there was a lot of, well, this would be amazing if we could change how people log into websites. And, right. You know, people have this incredible profile and identity on Facebook, and it just seems logical to let other developers use that, right? right. Why have people filling out these forms and clicking Makes buttons? No and, you know, one of the biggest problems I think we all face as entrepreneurs on the internet is just acquiring a customer, right? right. And when we were building Facebook Connect, we would see, um, you know, websites that would have a 70 to 80% drop off rate right. on their login form or their sign up form. Right. And so the fact that we were able to, chop that by, you know, 50 to 60% or even more in some cases, right. I think has been valuable to people. But That's only um, half the benefit. The other yeah. key piece is that it comes along with all their social graph. Yeah. I mean, that's, well, that's empowered a ton of businesses that otherwise never would have, you know, had a chance. Absolutely. And, you know, I think that we all, I think that building social software has become a really important um, and interesting thing for entrepreneurs to do in technology. And, before Facebook, it was really hard to map out the connections between people. It was really hard to understand who a user was and to personalize your experience. And, and so Facebook has made it really easy for us to you know, connect someone with all of their friends, whether it's a content site or a utility of some kind, yeah, sure. and then personalize the whole experience based on your interests and who you're connected and to. And the platform yeah. is essentially turning Facebook into Windows, letting people build apps on top of that. Yeah. Was that your actual idea? I would say it was a combination of people's ideas. Right. Um, you know, there were various APIs that were built in the early days um, by a variety of different individuals. Um, Dustin Moskovitz did a lot of work on the APIs. Yeah. Uh, this fellow named Dave Fetterman, who doesn't get talked about enough, but was like a major uh, How many an Daves engineer. Are there, exactly? <laughs> there, were, there were a lot of Daves. Uh, when I joined Facebook, there were actually three Daves and a girl named Morin. So, <laughs> yeah. it, you know, it was kind of fun. But, um, you know, there were a couple of those guys. And, you know, of course, Mark uh, has always been very interested in platforms. And, um, yeah. and, uh, and you know, even his previous projects that he did before Facebook had platforms. He did a Winamp platform, yeah. you know, and those kinds of things. And so I think if you're a good technologist, I think you, you ultimately end up upon the platform thinking. So mm-hmm. um, I would say the, 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 the thing that changed uh, in 2006, 2007 was that um, we started working on platform in earnest, and we we stopped thinking about it as an API mm. and started thinking about it as an operating system. And, and that, that was a big shift. You and know. it was, I would say, you know, of all the things Facebook did, a lot of them were evolutionary. A better version of Friendster, a better version of MySpace. I don't think anybody would disagree with that. Um, but the platform was truly the most innovative piece of Facebook. Is that is that correct in your thinking? Yeah, well, I mean, I think that... But that was their true innovation. Yeah, I well, think that it's, there's it's probably... For, it's what allowed for the things like the games to even really happen. Yeah. I would say there was... You know, I, I would chalk it up to two things, right? If it wasn't for Facebook being this killer app of the desktop internet, right. um, we wouldn't have been able to build the platform. So right. the, the early work that Mark did around... Um, oh, it certainly set it up. Yeah, set it up. And but then, just in terms of pure certainly. innovation, as an innovator yourself, yeah. you, know, you look at the Facebook history... You know, it was a better mousetrap, but it wasn't, it was still a mousetrap. But nobody had really thought about, hey, what if you could build a platform on the web yeah. for web apps? I mean, that was truly, I mean, I'm trying to think if there was maybe Net Vibes or, you know, some of those other things, but really that, that was a truly unique concept. Yeah. Part of the idea actually came from a, uh, when I was at Apple, uh, before I was at Facebook, we were one of Facebook's first partners. And um, we were one of the very first advertising partners. And, uh, Dustin and I used to have a lot of conversations around what it, what would it be like to put Facebook into the address book of the Mac OS. Hmm. And so a lot of the ideas actually came from, you know, how do we put Facebook into the Mac OS? How do we put Facebook into the ah, Mac OS? Interesting. And so I kept thinking about um, Facebook as this thing that would, you know, if you gave it to the Macintosh developer community, which this was, you know, long before the iPhone, right. the Macintosh developer community has always been the most vibrant, most design focused. What would they do with it? Yeah. And so I kept thinking about that while I was working at Apple. And it was clear that, you know, that idea was pretty crazy and probably would be pretty hard to push through the Apple system. So uh, Dustin and I were having a lot of conversations in the summer of 2006 around, you know, what would it be like if Facebook was an operating system? Um, So 
fast forward to the sort of let's call it the midlife crisis of Path. <laughs> you, um, you, you, the the trough of despair that all startups go through. You get this massive yeah. hype cycle, and let's face it, you're high profile. You going and doing a social network after being one of the sort of key members of the Facebook team, people are going to read into that a whole bunch. You doing something that's private as opposed to public after all the public the public private snafus lawsuits brouhaha's at facebook a lot of people read into that that put a lot of baggage i think into it um and then everybody goes away essentially um and i watch my own feed go from being you know i don't know 10 20 people being active a day to just shervin <laughs> and i just started thinking my god poor dave i mean yeah. you you must be just crushed by this but then i thought well you know you did tell me early on you were a fan of the slow product movement. So yes. um, what was it like when the users went away? It's hard. Um, but I think that, well, so a couple of things happened. You know, I think we, we took a strategy in launching the first product, which uh, was very born of the web world and of the desktop world, uh, you know, the PC world. This idea that you sort of can put out a product and then iterate on it very quickly. Yeah. And so the first version of path was actually not as tied up uh, in a bow as I would have liked it to have been. Um, and well, if you're waiting, if, if you're waiting till you're happy with it, yeah, that's the old adage goes. Like, Certainly. You're waiting um, too long. You know, and, and maybe if we would have tied it up more, it probably, you know, maybe it would have had a marginal impact, but we certainly didn't take um, as much time as we could have. Um, and so <clears throat> we found that it was very hard to iterate quickly. That's the, that's the key thing is that in the on app mobile. store, yeah, and it's specifically in the app store, uh, the iteration cycles are two weeks, three weeks sometimes. Which is exactly the opposite of how Facebook works. Exactly. Facebook two, was three times every a day. single day. Yeah. yeah. And that's a, you know, the feedback cycle becomes, uh, I've been sort of saying it requires a, a Zen level of patience to develop uh -huh. on mobile because you have to uh, aggregate quite a bit of feedback over over much long, I mean, an internet time. It's a very long period of time. And then, weeks. Uh, yeah, and then put it, put it all to work, and then release a new version. And so that was something that we really had to learn. Um, and that I think we, we took quite a bit of time, um, basically the first half of this year, just shipping every two weeks, trying to learn how to do this um, yeah. and what it took to build things on mobile. It turns out to be a lot harder to build mobile interfaces um, than I even ever imagined. When I left Facebook, you know, I thought, oh, I was really interested in mobile. I'd spent some time working on mobile and the mobile platform, and I, I spent some time on Facebook for iPhone. But, you know, we definitely just took the Facebook experience and put it into the iPhone rather than thinking about it from a native, you know, with a beginner's mind. Right. And so we also had to learn a lot about uh, how to build interfaces for a screen that small. And is that because of Objective-C <clears throat> versus just HTML? Is it because of the app store rejecting things, compiling? What is it? I think it's actually it's actually comes comes down to UI. Mm. Um, it actually turns out to be much harder to think about um, these complex social feed UIs in a in a screen that's you know this big, right? right. Um, and so uh, that took a lot. You know, I think we went through uh, I think a seven or eight iterations of the first version of path two and then i think we were up to about 20 different iterations in the feed by the time we were done wow. and so it just takes a long time to get all the information that you want in and not put buttons everywhere and there's this innate desire to kind of build these uh uis with buttons and things for people to do and we really had to figure out you know this the screen's very small and and yeah. how do we how do we make it beautiful to read and good storytelling and you know all these kinds of things and so that was important. Um, I guess the other thing was, you know, I think that this happens to a lot of startups, right? Where you go through the initial launch and dependent on how much, how, how, how big the expectations are coming right. out. I, I've seen this actually happen with other folks that come from the Facebook, you know, ecosystem. Sure, Quora. Yeah. Uh, Everyone kind of goes through this because people expect you to build Facebook again overnight. Yeah. Right. Um, Facebook took eight years to become what it is today. Another overnight success. Yeah. <laughs> And if, it's interesting, if you talk to anybody from the early days of Facebook, I think we had around um, you know, 800,000 to a million users in the first year, yeah. which people often don't remember, right? It was considered quaint, yeah. Facebook in a way. I mean, people would say Facebook, and you'd be like, oh, yeah, 
Are you going to nice sign little college network? Yeah, it was like yeah. a college network. It was like, are you going to sign up when they open it up? You know, and it was like, I don't know. I mean, I have my MySpace page and I, you know, I got my LinkedIn. Yeah. I don't know if I need that. Exactly. And so going through that expectation wall, I don't yeah. know how else to describe it, is um, a very interesting thing to do. Um, and after you come through it and you sort of end up in the valley or whatever. The, yeah, yeah, the trough of <laughs> sadness and despair. Um, that can be very hard, I think, for um, some founders. And was it hard for you? Teams. Because um, you seem like a very intellectual, sensitive guy to me. I th- I could see it being hard on you. Uh, I think it's it was hard, but I was prepared for it. And I think I even uh, talked to you about it yeah. um, before we launched. Um, we've always been very intentional about what we wanted to do. And one of the things that about building social products is that in using it yourself, you can actually get it into a state which you sort of understand that it's really good, right? So. Right. I was able to, and my co-founder Dustin and I were able to get it to a point where we had our whole families on the system and, you know, had this very rich, very warm, uh, very trusted experience. And so when you know that that experience exists, you know that you can get it there for everybody else, but it's just a question of staying focused for long enough. You had the magical experience and I had the magical experience and Shervin had the magical experience of PATH. And as I explained it to people, the people who can appreciate PATH are ones who are have kids yes and i said you don't want to share photos of your kid i had a baby in uh, two years ago right when you had your baby path yep. <laughs> and i i said i don't want to share this with anybody and shervin and i was shervin an investor in Path? no he's just a super fan yes he's your greatest supporter <laughs> he's really wonderful <laughs> he's an awesome guy i just had yeah. him on the program it's one of the best episodes we've ever done it's, it's a front runner for show of the year i feel bad that he's not an investor at this point <laughs> i think yeah advisor shares would be advisable <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he um he and I were acquaintances, but we would wake up every day in PATH and trade pictures of our kids, basically. Yes. And it almost felt like it was me, him, and I think either his second wife or girlfriend. I don't know who Anna is, actually, in his life. It's his wife, yeah. It's his wife, okay. Mm-hmm. And um, his kids, and I would see them eating, and he'd see me changing a diet bread. It just went on and on. And then when I saw him, I hadn't seen him in two or three months, we had this incredible hug and talked about our kids for an hour, you know, and it was this magical moment. I said, people can't understand. This product is revolutionary because it's built intimacy yeah. um, in a way that Facebook or Twitter cannot Yeah. because we've selected each other and we trust each other to share the most intimate moments. And, um, and it even increases the trust. That's what's really interesting. What do you mean by that? Well, the experience that you just described, yep. right? Perhaps before, you know, you, you may not have known any of this information about Sir- Shervin. When, right. you, when you first I connected didn't. with him, right? I mean, he told me he had kids at one point, but that's it. And you, you might have trusted him, right? Yep. In business. And um, as you've sort of gone on, you've now shared a lot of very intimate information yeah. with each other. And um, you've sort of learned that, you, you know, you're normal in a lot of ways that uh, you may not have expected. Right. And that and that might have deepened your relationship. Right. And so that was kind of the thing that um, Dustin and I realized that, it's possible to get people to that point right. in the system. And that was the early days of Facebook, right? People had that experience when you felt like Facebook was trusted and private. Yes. And the settings were by default private and the network wasn't that big. Yes. Everybody wasn't on it. It was like, I could share a picture of myself doing shots or yep. changing a diaper yep. or getting on a private plane. But that I would be, oh, you know what? My friend's got a private plane. I don't want to take a picture of it. I don't want to take a picture of doing shots because I think my people at my office might see it and they might think you know less of me or my Halloween costume is too sexy. Um, you know, I was sexy pirate that year. I wasn't <laughs> just a disturbing image for people. Uh, but that was the Facebook experience, was it not? Yeah, and <clears throat> I, what, what I went wrong with Facebook? Yeah. Well, I, I describe this as you know I think most of us that build for the internet have been through all of the communities over the years, right? Whether it was Early on, it was IRC and yep. Prodigy and CompuServe News and AOL, groups, AOL. And, you know, all this stuff. And, um, you know, over the last 10 years, it's been, um, you know. Uh, Rise, Facebook, yep, Friendster, Facebook, Friendster you LinkedIn. Know, LinkedIn um, you know, lots of different networks, Tribe. right? Tribe, yeah. Uh, and all the, all the stuff in between. And in the, in the best of those experiences, in the early days, you experience this great sense of intimacy, right? Yeah. Like Twitter is my favorite uh, one to explain because we all in the tech community experienced it very strongly, right? right. Uh, I remember talking to people when Twitter was um, the first couple of years and people would say, I feel like I can see the, uh, <clears throat> you know, the, the 
synapses of the Silicon Valley brain firing right in front of my eyes. You know, right. it felt like this, you know, you would get in there and you would want to read every single tweet. Right. right. And when you would go to a conference, people would say, oh, we're in this room and we're in that room. And the whole the conference would, yeah, would shift around and people would go. Um, and at some point, Twitter transitioned from that to being a, a large scale media network. Right. right. Which is actually also good. Yeah, right? it's the most amazing yeah. broadcasting tool ever. Ever, right? And that's also really good, right? right? But it's not what it was before. And so you're almost saying, I want to stop at that yes. wonderful, nuanced moment. Exactly. And so that was where the whole idea of a limit came in. Yeah. Um, and we and thought about that- it in different ways. But, yeah. you know, it's to me, I also really, uh, we're very design focused, and very yeah. focused on simplicity. So it seemed like the best way to capture that moment in time was just right. to put a limit on it. Right. And, um, and, and to try to sort of lock the intimacy of the uh, community down into, into, a, into a situation where um, it felt like that forever. Interesting. <clears throat> um, and so somewhere after Path 1.0 and before Path 2.0, something called W comes out with. Yes. And I just thought to myself, this is confusing. Mm-hmm. I guess this means Dave thinks Path is a failure and he's winding it down. <laughs> To do with. I guess we didn't do a very good job with No, terrible. And that's, I think, what a lot of people in the industry thought yeah. uh, was, oh, he gave up on path. And, you know, then you've got Scobalizer and Robert yeah. Scoble, you know, who he, he himself will say, you know, like, hey, please don't listen to me. I'm just, you know, a goofy, yeah. you know, guy who loves tech. But, you know, people start writing your obituary. Yeah. Uh, so this is now, the path story has gone from, you know, game-changing you know, hundred million dollar exits before launch, and you know everybody in the world wants to invest. And this is, you know, Dave is, you know, the next Zuckerberg, whatever it is, and the second coming. This is going to change everything. To it's a ghost town, and he's given up. What was going on with the with the with app? How did that come into play, and what was it? So exactly? one of the things that we were trying to do, I guess one of the things that I learned at Facebook was um, <clears throat> to pay attention to user behavior right. and try to. Uh, figure out how what people are doing with your product mm-hmm. and to empower them to do more of it, right? right? We've all seen this happen. You know, Twitter is the best example where users started hacking it in a variety of different ways and Hashtags. different yeah, different features came out of that. Um, at Facebook, we did the same thing. You know, early on at Facebook, there was um, you know, Zuck will tell the story of uh, the first version didn't have photos. Uh, all right. it had was a, f- a profile photo, and users were changing their profile photo uh, multiple times per day more often than they were changing their clothes, right? Right. And so it was clear that people wanted photos. And, um, you know, all of their URLs were WebShots URLs in the early days, like the homepage URL. Right. And so it was clear that people really love photos. So, you know, putting photos onto Facebook um, became really popular, still is to this day. Um, And uh, other features came the same way. People don't remember this, but the original wall was a wiki on your profile. And people were leaving messages for each other and... Uh, putting their own status messages wow. out. And so, you know, status and the wall and all that stuff sort of emerged out of this wiki that was sitting on the profile. And so um, while we were going through, you know, <coughs> the dark days, uh, we started looking at what are users doing? Because we still had a core group of, you know, basically tens of thousands of users that were yeah. actually really excited about Path and right. were in the right state. You know, they had their families. We were starting to get a lot of emails from people over the year that were saying, oh my gosh, I have my whole family on here and this magical experience, you know, the exact same thing that we just talked about. Um, And so we just tried to look at user behavior and what are people doing and talk to users and things. And one of the things that people were talking about was this whole concept of collecting who they were with. And Mm. so we thought that was a really powerful idea. And so we actually wanted to test it um, because one of the big pieces of feedback we were also getting was around, oh, well, you guys are so po- focused on privacy and you know that's never going to work. And um, I've got my own theories on that that we can talk about next. Yeah. But um, And so uh, a few guys in the company during a hackathon decided to build a, a ah. product that was entirely focused on just this concept of who you're with right. um, and uh, do it on a public network as a test. Right. And so... Um, the way that I looked at it was, okay, well, we have these hackathons. We try to do them, uh, you know, once a month or once every yeah. couple of months. And these guys built something cool, so we might as well just release it. And um, we, we actually titled it a short, and that yeah. was the way we were trying to communicate it to yeah, say that it wasn't, to wasn't a, uh, throttle down a, expectation. A, a pivot or anything like that. 
um, because Pixar releases these small movies, right? And uh, I kind of I like the I like Hollywood as a um, kind of a proxy for where we should go as an industry. But um, so we released it, and uh, you know, it it actually went pretty well for the first week, and um, I think we got probably around fifty thousand downloads or something like that. Um, uh, but two problems happen. One, it turns out that bragging about who you're with in public is uh, gets you really nasty feedback. Yeah, and, a little uh, gauche. Yeah, exactly. Oh, and I just dropped three names. Exactly. And so uh, the other thing was we used Twitter uh, almost in a Facebook Connect kind of way is yeah. the only way to log in. And actually, we got feedback, which I didn't expect, which was that nobody could remember their Twitter passwords. Ah. So people would get to that page and we'd get all these support emails saying, I can't remember my password <laughs> for Twitter. Yeah. Oh and goodness. it's because I think people put their Twitter password into their client and, uh, and then they can't remember okay. what it is. Now, when we get back from the commercial break, I want to talk about the triumphant <laughs> return of path because we, <laughs> this is, we to talk about storytelling in Hollywood. We've now we've taken the whole audience on this incredible journey of you <laughs> having this triumphant launch, the, the, the trow of sorrow, uh, and, and, and crushing, what'd you call it? The wall? What was the wall? Through the wall. Yeah. yeah through yeah, the wall. What was the wall, wall though? You said some work for <laughs> I will have to look uh, it up in the, the chat. The wall of expectations. The wall yeah, of yeah, breaking yeah. through the wall of expectations yeah. to 2.0. Hey, and one thing that will break through your wall of expectations. It's a pretty good segue. <laughs> <laughs> is go to meeting. Uh, I use go to meeting every week. Um, yeah, probably four or five times a week. And I love the product. Uh, you know, I angel invest in a bunch of companies, had a couple of exits, and uh, that's going pretty well. I just love investing in companies because I get to hang out with the entrepreneurs. It's a good Me excuse too. to. You like doing it too, right? Yeah, love it. How many have you yeah. done? Uh, actually, off the top of my head, I don't know. Dozen? Um, no, a couple dozen. Yeah. couple dozen? Yeah. Look at you. Can't spend that Facebook share fast enough, can you? <laughs> <laughs> it's good to be a Facebook early yeah. employee. Um, but it is fun. and It's you, just great to empower entrepreneurs. You know? yeah, yeah. It just feels so great. And um, when I meet with them, a lot of times they're going to tell me, like, hey, I'll, I'll do a Skype with you. I'll do this with you. And then it never works. And then the, we, we spend 20 minutes trying to get the connectivity working. Now I just I take it out of their hands. I say, my assistant will set up a go-to meeting the short URL gets sent, everybody gets on it, it works, it's rock solid, and there's nobody else on the network. It's just private, uh, high quality meetings that just work. It's really and smart. It's just smart because you know yeah. what? I don't have that much time and I wanna hear the whole story. And I gotta tell you, every time I get on a call and somebody says, oh, we'll do Skype, the first 10 minutes is like adding each other and then waiting for some server somewhere to authenticate you and then I don't see you, oh, I have my privacy setting. I don't. It never works. But I send that short URL, Boom, it's rock solid. It works. They share their desktop. I share my desktop. We are in the chat room. We're sharing documents. It just works. And it works on iPhones and Android. Go download the apps. Please use GoToMeeting if you're doing any kind of serious meetings online because you're going to look like a professional, not like you're, you know, like, well, you know, the broke ass entrepreneur that you are. Like, you know, we've all been. <laughs> use a professional uh, meeting solution like GoToMeeting, like I do. Uh, look like a pro and use the promo code start. Thank you so much to my friends at GoToMeeting, not just for sponsoring the program, which I truly do appreciate, but really most of all for making a product that I love and use that makes my life easier. It's got to save me at least an hour a week of, you know, five meetings, 10 minutes, 15 minutes of this nonsense of trying to get the meeting open and show, oh, you're sharing the screen. You're not sharing the screen. I don't see anything. It just works. They've got all these support specialists working on that very specific feature of sharing screens. And let me tell you, that share, sharing your screen is a very difficult technical problem because you have everybody's got a different size screen. You're using Windows. I'm using Mac. Screen resolutions, everything, different applications. Making it look good is not easy. And they spend the time and dedicate themselves to making it work. It's an elegant product. And, you know, we only let elegant products sponsor the program. I thank them from the bottom of my heart for sponsoring the program. Thank you, GoToMeeting. Hey, so I wake up, I don't know, what was it now, two weeks ago? Uh, the 29th? 29th. Think, yeah. So, so on the 29th. Just about two weeks, yeah. Day after my birthday, <laughs> you send me my present. Happy birthday. Yeah, yeah. the 28th is my birthday. And I-, thanks, I thanks for believing. Of, of <laughs> course. I, I And I said, I, I well, actually, I kind of gave up on you with that. I, when the W came out, I didn't give up on you, but I was like worried about you. I was like, God, I hope he's doing okay. And I was like, meant to call you uh, and just sort of give you a thumbs up. But um, I see on my- BlackBerry, still use a BlackBerry for email. I see 30 people want to share their path with me. <laughs> and my initial thing was, okay, some schmuck in the you know sysadmin group had the server off for a, a month or two or six months because I hadn't gotten an invitation in six months. And these are all backed up invites. 
I go to open path and it says, hey, there's a new version. I download the version. And lo and behold, it's this beautiful, elegant version, unlike any experience I've had to date on my iPhone. Literally. Um, the, pro the product um, takes off like a rocket ship. And I just want to go through a couple of the features. One, when you hit plus to share something, this gorgeous spiraling out of the circles happens. I, I can even do it here. You guys have probably seen it. If you haven't, I'm going to have to do this in reverse. But you see when you press it there and the spiral comes in and out? Oh, look at it. I'm doing it pretty well. And then you have your photos, people, places, music was an addition, uh, chatting, and this beautiful fi feature, feature. There's no way I'm going to be able to do this. But uh, you can say if I'm awake or I'm asleep. And if I say I'm going to go to sleep, boom, it fades to. This is when I knew this was legit. Yeah. That's when I cool said, hey, you go to sleep, now. I was like, what is this? And it puts a clock for your nightstand. I said, that's a $2 app in the app store. Somebody's thinking about things over at Path again. The moon they is in phase, too. I don't know if you've noticed that. Oh, wow. That is pretty dope, dude. Um, it is the actual moon in the location. In the correct phase, yeah. Wow. So that's a level of detail and nerdity that <laughs> well, nobody gives, does. Gives the weather when you wake up as well. And that's why how I many think hours you slept. It's you're awesome. like, you know, you're like a, the Spielberg of, of uh, product design. Like you are actually <laughs> making sure that like that shovel in the background is a, a real World War II shovel that, you know, is the one that would have been used in World War II because we don't want Saving Private Ryan to have a shovel from World War One. I. I mean, it, it can't, it came out. How long did it take well, to build something like this? Because this is, Five times the product of the first version. Five times. Sort of to the previous story. Yeah. You know, we, we were paying a lot of attention to how users were using the first version. And we found that people loved the photos. Um, the, the interface was a little too complicated to just get them in there. Yeah. Um, people really loved videos because we were one of the only apps that did yep. video. Yep. <clears throat> but the other interesting thing that we saw was that people were doing really interesting things with the product. They were right. screenshotting a bunch of different yep. apps. Um, most notably, they were screenshotting their iPod all the time. Yes, uh, to, to put, share the music. To put music into their path. Right. And uh, they were screenshotting the Yellow Notes app a lot. Yep. To put the put notes. You Blog know, posts. Yeah, important personal, um, you know, uh, personal uh, thoughts. My mom was doing this, you know, and uh, wow, your mom was hacking path. Yeah, and uh, it was really interesting. Yeah. And uh, you know, we of course had this whole concept of who you're with and people actually kept telling us well i want to sh i want to collect who i'm with but i don't want to take a photo of them you know because mm. we were asking people to take a photo all the time right and it turns out that you know people sometimes want to represent that they're having a social experience but they want they don't want to interrupt dinner to say okay everyone before we eat yes you know before you eat your food right uh you know let the foie gras get button. cold yeah right <laughs> let's get a photo <laughs> and so we uh you know we added that um and, you know, I, I think we all know that collecting the places that you go is something that people right. clearly desire to do. Um, and that was something that we saw in, in people were taking photos of the, of the menus with the, you know, the label of the restaurant or the sure. photo of the sign. And again, we, we were hearing the same thing there where, oh, you know, I like taking a photo of the restaurant that I'm at, but people would take photos of like the coffee or whatever. And it turns out that people were taking photos of the coffee. If we talk, when we talked to users, they said, "Well, I, I don't want to take a photo of the person that I'm with because that's just weird." Right. So I take a photo of the coffee in order to get the name of the place into my path. It's a yeah. It was a hack. Like yeah. I got to put something in there. Yeah. So I'll just take a so picture. I'll just do the coffee. Well, yeah. I would. I famously, I took pictures of my sneakers, my dirty yeah. sneakers on flights to just let people know I was on a flight. Yeah. And, and so, I was like, I don't know what else to do. I don't want to. I don't want to stick my camera up in the middle of a Virgin America flight. So okay, screw it. I'm just gonna take a picture of my sneakers. I have ten pictures of my sneakers in my yeah. path to represent my flights. Yeah, and that's interesting. But the reality is, you know, I think the the, the human desire that we were hearing throughout all of this is this desire to sort of capture and journal one's life. Right. And um, so the other thing we did was we just asked a lot of people, "What is path to you?" You know, the, right. to these very powerful, you know, these users that were just loving it. And we heard the same word over and over and over. People kept telling us it's the best journal that I've ever had. It's mm. a journal. It's a journal. It's a diary. You know. Right. And so um, Dustin and I looked at each other at one point and we said, "They're right. You know, the reason we love this product is because we can put a photo in and it has so much more context." Right. I was finding when I was taking photos with my other camera, I was felt like they were they were metadata less. You know. Right. And um, and so we just heard from people over and over. I document my life with this. This is my right. journal. And so uh, 
that really began to inspire us. Um, we, we sort of started thinking, okay, it's a journal. Let's go down that route. And, right. um, and, and, uh, and it's not just a journal. It's a modern journal. It's this journal that's on your phone, right? There's all these people using all these apps to do all these different things that are just um, the innate human desire to collect the places that you go to capture the yeah, people Yeah, so they're on meet. Foursquare. They're on Instagram. They're doing statuses. Yeah. They're listening to music and then sharing it on Twitter. Yeah, it's they're a, collecting business cards with a variety of different apps, right? Yeah. Like who you're meeting. Card munch. All this kind Ashable, of stuff. Yeah. yeah. Gowalla. And it's just passports. at the same time, you know, we were carrying around moleskins to every meeting with us. Right? right, these journals, and I think all of us have a journal of some kind. Yeah, and I think the phone's beginning to uh, become the journal. You know, just like it's becoming our camera. The, right. The these devices are becoming a lot of these things that used to be analog. Is it life casting redux? I think so to some extent. You know, I, I, that idea is a very old one. You right. know, I, I was really inspired actually even before I went to Facebook when I was working at Apple by. This Yale professor, um, David Gerlinter, who sort of yeah, David Gerlinter, yeah, yeah. He, he he kind of famous for having uh, been attacked by the Unabomber, yeah, but a very big thinker in terms of science, very long and technology. time ago, you know, yeah. in the '70s, I think, came yeah. up with the idea of live streaming, yeah. And um, there's also a guy at Microsoft who uh, came up with this uh, system he called My Life Bits, and about five years ago, Fast Company did a really interesting article and he, he sort of was collecting everything about his life all the time and trying to create this off off board memory you know right. and he, had, he's, he wore a camera around his neck and it would take right. a photo every minute obviously those ideas are are you know at the Creepy. time probably were pretty out there right. but now that we have these little miniature computers in our pockets it's, it's possible to do science so, fiction is becoming reality yeah. yeah and so i guess that that sort of tells you the story of how we came at, uh, upon the types of content um, with exception to one type, you know, the, the sleep, which you just showed, um, that we kind of came upon because <clears throat> um, we were noticing that people were wearing things like uh, these Jawbone Ups now. They yep. were using Fitbits. And these things create really Wake beautiful yeah, yeah, really beautiful visualizations often. Right. And people were screenshotting those and putting right. them into their path. And because Path is such a trusted private network, um, it turns out people are more willing, or not even more willing, they, they actually like sharing very personal information. The health, health graph. Health stuff, yeah. Right. And so um Does that mean sleep, WeScale will be uh, integrated we'll, at some point? We'll see. Yeah, That's it's something yes. that we're... Uh, just very... so everybody knows, uh, <laughs> as a poker player, the I just watched Dave tell, take a huge yeah. gulp, and I got I I got, I got, I got that tell loud and clear. Let's just say, is it on the product radar, or is it on the product roadmap? <laughs> You can say radar, and it means a non-committal. Yeah, radar. Okay, it's on the radar. Okay, yeah. yes. It's, it, I mean, I, I think that the, the best way to think about it, though, is that our users were already doing this behavior. Yeah. And so um, we wanted to empower it in a very beautiful way um, and, to, and to make it smart. And yeah. so that's sort of where this whole idea of this being a smart channel comes in. You know, we can do things with the data that you put in right. um, for you that are really interesting, right? What do you, what do you think of the runkeeper uh, kind of use Runkeeper. Totally cool. Yeah. yeah. You know, their stuff is cool. What Nike Plus is doing is cool. Yeah. Fitbit. Um, Fitbit's cool. We Things is cool. Um, yeah. There's a lot of different uh, personal health related gadgets. And, and yeah. I think that if you look at what's going on with uh, companies like Nest and, you know, there's a lot of sensors that are kind of getting all over the place. And right. so it seems that that trend is going to continue uh, and multiply yes. very quickly. And the passive inclusion of that in your path. Exactly is very important to us. Wow. And so we kind of think that um, if we can give you a place where you you feel comfortable um, and is trustworthy, so and a company brilliant. that behaves that way. It's just, I gotta say, um, that's just so brilliant. <laughs> now, wait a second. Was that anywhere on your radar pre-launching path one? Yes. Oh, so you were actually thinking that people would passively share sensor-based data. Yes. Wow. Yeah, it's, uh, it's something that- Two years ago, people weren't really thinking about that too much. Well, it's an interest. If if you just extrapolate where mobile technology is going, you know, when um, you say that, because <laughs> you say it with a sort of certitude that I feel as well, right? I, I yeah. think Jason agrees. How much of that is, um, sort of looking at Japan as a country who's maybe further extrapolated along the social dynamic or curve than we are, as being completely mobile mm -hmm. ten years before we've been. And their main social network is limited. Their their normal graph. Mixie? Mixie's oh, limited I to about. I actually didn't know that. They're limited to, tw the average graph size is 12. 
of their friends. Huh. Interesting. And Facebook can't really crack Japan because Mixie's so trusted and so tight. Right. They look why at would that I like, ever? Why would I ever do that? Right. It was. It would be as if if Path existed before Facebook. Interesting. Would right. people adopt Facebook? I actually didn't know that. I guess really? that shows my well, my lack of uh, at least understanding. Of I the think Japanese what it shows market. is that. Yeah great ideas can manifest themselves in different regions at different times independently of each other. Which seems, I mean, we, we see that happen all the time. Yeah. But, um, so anyway, you were continuing on about uh, yeah, I, sensor-based I that, data incorporated into paths. Yeah, I think that passively. what that requires, though, is a, is a trusted network. Right? right. And a place that, you know, not only does the business of the network align with that, but the product does as well. And so mm-hmm. one of the other things we've been very interested in is, you know, we're not, doing advertising. We're, we're very focused on, um, you know, doing freemium services. We're, we're selling some things now. They're very the small. Lenses. They're very small. Um, I bought all of them just to support you guys. We appreciate that. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And we know that that's not a, you know, a huge business, but what we are, you know, we're going to start doing um, things next year to, to provide services and different goods and things that, that might be good. So, um, I but it's give important somebody to a me. virtual good, like a yeah. flower or something. Or maybe even a real good. You know? Oh, wow. Um, We've we've got users begging us for books and you know things yeah. with their path in it. So um, there's there's things like that that we think are interesting. But why not an in-app purchase that just says, "I want to be put a crown on my head and be a path supporter." Yeah, I think there's there's things like that. Um, your your you fans know, are loyal; they would do it for two bucks. Companies like uh, Tumblr have really pioneered expression-based marketplaces that are very successful. Expression-based so, marketplaces. Yeah, and so we we kind of when I actually think about it like the fashion market. You know, we um, we all wear different clothes every day, yeah. and the fashion market is a four hundred billion dollar market, right? right? And it's interesting to think the number of people that actually see the clothes that you wear on a given base every right. day is actually not that many, right? right? So. We're expressing ourselves through our clothing right. every day, um, yet we're not seeing that many people. And so, in a, a extremely expensive way. Yeah. yeah. And so, it seems like there's an opportunity to work with those brands and things like that to do a more authentic, um, you know, type of thing with them. So. Yeah. Virtual goods. You, you read it. You read any William Gibson? Yeah, of course. Yeah, I, yeah. I see a lot of Neuromancer. William Gibson. Yeah. yeah, it feels like, you know, Path has a little bit of that. Um, Virtual light, Iduru, people. The future know. is here. It's just not evenly distributed. Yeah, yet. and also, yeah, yeah the, the the street finds its own use for technology. Yeah, uh, and also God's little toy. I don't know if you remember in one of the books, he had this. I've told the story before. I think on the show, he ha- he had this thing called God's little toy or something, and it was a zeppelin. Oh, interesting. That flew above your head. It was GPS or whatever tied to you or through the sensor. It had a camera on it. So if the three of us were sitting here, I mean, we're being recorded because we're doing a show, but if this was dinner or a cafe or a business meeting, there'd be a tiny Zeppelin above each of our heads, maybe the size of, you know, smaller than a football with a tiny camera on it. And it would be recording our entire lives into a database hmm. that we could then query in the future. Interesting. Pretty crazy. Well, it's actually a good segue to talk about this. Uh, oh, you're launching that? No, we've got oh, this great. automatic. <laughs> the Path Zeppelin is arrived? Well, we've got this uh, feature we call automatic, which ah. is part of Path 2. Yes, which, um, I did see that. You know, it, it sort of comes to the same um, line of thought where we we noticed that, you know, obviously people want to collect this data about their lives and, and they're interested in making, you know, checking into things. But we also were hearing from people, I just don't like pressing buttons, right? Yeah. And, um if you could just do it for me, that would be even better, right? right? And and I think we all like things that just do things that are valuable for us, sure. right? Um, and so we started thinking about that, and we saw some problems with, um, you know, th- there's been some uh, applications uh, which show you a map and put a dot where your friends are and things, and those haven't been. Um, you know, it Google seems like La- does Google Latitude do that? Yeah, 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 and and uh, it runs in the background, I think, on Android, but nobody yep. uses it. Yeah, and I well, I think that probably. Very small groups of people use it, right? Like it's not a it's not a social experience. It's right. an experience for your wife, right? Yeah. Um, and so we knew that we couldn't take it down to that level of resolution because right. that gets um, and also that we had to figure out a better interface. And so we tried to create um, stories in your path, which are um, interesting. And the way we did that was by developing an algorithm, which um, basically looks at your everyday patterns. You know where you maybe check in or what you know where you're adding things from and uh, everybody's kind of got a daily routine right where you go to work where you go home all those kinds of things and anytime you break out of that pattern we actually uh, create a story hmm. in your path and so and if you're in a city like san francisco 
um, you know, let's say I work down here in Soma and uh, this afternoon, maybe I go to the mission and uh, that's abnormal for me. Um, it would update my path automatically that I'm in the mission. And the idea there is that um, close friends like serendipity, right? Yeah. Like you love it when you're sort of in a neighborhood and yeah. you randomly run into a friend. And so the idea there is to sort of increase that serendipity between close friends. Which happened with Shervin. Yeah. I saw that the couple of days after the product came out, I saw he was in Culver City. Oh, interesting. Mahalo's office is in Culver City. I said, we're, we're in Culver City around the block. He said, oh, I'll be, I'll be over there tomorrow. <laughs> I'm going to be here for another day. That's Came great. over and taped an episode. We would have never taped the episode. And that's the exact use case yeah. that we built it for. And now, it I also turned... does another thing, though, oh, which yeah. is um, when you take a long trip, uh-huh. um, we actually update it. We, we found this other case, which was um, families really want to know when their loved ones have landed safely right. somewhere. And so we actually, um, when, you up, when you sort of fly somewhere a longer distance, yeah. we, we create a little bit bigger story with a little plane. Ah. And we, we, we tell uh, you know, everybody in your network that you've landed and that everything's Ah, so cool. greater than 100 miles in an hour yeah. has to be a plane. Exactly. Therefore... Exactly. So we update that and we, we give it a little bit more weight because it's important that now, everybody know that you're safe. When I first turned it on, it seemed like it was defaulted on. Um, was it def- is it defaulted on? And no, is there- it's, uh, we actually use Apple's location dialogue right. to um, ask your permission. They to actually, use location. Yeah, they actually um, let you control the text right. in that dialogue, which ah. was... Um, actually, something I didn't know until we were working. Yeah, I didn't on this know you feature. could do that. I thought yeah. that that had to be their text. No, you can actually control the string. Because uh, Steve Jobs said one. that we take ownership of that at the D conference a couple of years Very ago. Very seriously. With Zuck in the room, two seats away from me, and he was sort of admonishing Zuck for the you know the massive faux pas and the beacon stuff or whatever. When, you know, um, so you changed it to be. Yeah, we use the we use that text to right. describe what the feature does. Ah, you know, then, I just clicked through it. Yeah. That Which we've problem. actually been getting that feedback. So oh yeah, maybe it, so. It's got to be defaulted off and it we're takes very, a splash screen, maybe. Yeah, we're very yeah. strongly in the in the you know total privacy by yeah. default, um, and you having full control in that camp. And so yeah. um, you know we did it through the the default interface. Um, it is opt in, but we we have been getting a little bit of feedback. So yeah. I think we'll probably make it more obvious. So you know what the interesting thing is? It doesn't bother me at all. Yeah. That you. It, let's say it turns out to be a mistake or whatever. It doesn't bother me at all. Yeah. I mean, I, that was the idea. Because I trust you guys and I know you have good intent. But I'll tell you something when the, the fifth or sixth time, sixth time I saw Mark flip, you know, I don't want to turn this to turn into a Facebook bashing session, but I think there were five or six huge mistakes in a row on Facebook in terms of flipping people's privacy and putting them through essentially very confusing screens. To do that, which ultimately wound up in the FTC settlement in which Zuckerberg himself said, we've made a ton of mistakes. We would change it if we could. Um, And if you do too many of those in a row, people start to think your intent is not good. Yeah, I think that um, to Mark's credit, though, uh, you know, the the first version of Facebook, uh, you know, was designed after he had created a, a previous system, which I think was called FaceMash. Yeah, and um, and people were begging him for privacy, right, uh, on that system. And there was a there was an article I think in the Harvard Crimson which described the types of privacy people would want, right. And so the very first version of Facebook had all of that built in, right. And so he clearly I, understands the issue, yeah, as well as anybody, yeah. If it wasn't, but he seems for to make Zuck, so you know, many mistakes. You know, I I'm not sure. Is that if, speed errors? What what is it? Is is he just so obsessed with growth? Or does he just have a vision of the future that's different than the rest of ours? I think Mark has a vision. And yeah, I think that, you know, Facebook um, really tries to innovate and they especially try to innovate in, in, in this space. Um, you know, I don't think Facebook does things with ill intent in mind. Right. I think they do design products that they think are good for the world and right. then push them out. And sometimes the world um, doesn't think so. <laughs> right. And so, well, so you, you end up in this situation where, you know, you as a you can understand this as a, someone who develops products where you, you you sort of know that this is good, but you have to kind of help the world get there. And so yeah. I think Facebook's sort of stuck in this um, cycle of, of, of doing that. Right. So I don't know if you read it. I won't assume you did, but I wrote a lot of critical things. I, I don't know if you were at Facebook when I wrote them, like, hey, this is too 
aggressive. I'm not sure, I'm not sure if I was. But I don't know if you did you read any of that stuff when I wrote it or uh, I remember a, yeah. a little bit, but um, do you think quite a while ago? Yeah, it's been a while actually. I don't even remember what I wrote. <laughs> um, do you think, in some ways, your efforts in Path, and I think a lot of us read into this, are a reaction to what Facebook became eventually, or or are we just reading into that? Are you motivated to prove there's a better way to do it? Are you reacting based upon your collective experience having seen it done wrong or not done to what you feel is the ideal? I don't think I'm reacting to anything. Um, I think that we believe that there's a market opportunity now Yeah. Um, because Facebook has decided to leave it behind. Um, Facebook has become default public, right? Um, which is a very important distinction. Right. Um, just like the story we told about Twitter earlier. Right. You know, over time, uh, these networks become something that might not be the same thing that they were before. Right. right? And uh, Facebook has become one of the biggest, you know, most um, uh, valuable uh, media companies. You know, oh, there's yeah. no better way to create social change in the world than Facebook groups yeah. um, or a Facebook page. Um, so most all of these successful things, product ever. Yeah. So all of these things are very, very good. Yeah. Right. But. Uh, in the process of becoming that, you know, you, you, you do end up leaving some use cases behind yeah. and you end up serving uh, different masters than when um, mm. than different different well, times. Well put, well put. And so um, to me, that's totally fine. You know, and I think that if it wasn't for Facebook, we wouldn't even have the conversation around privacy. We wouldn't have an identity platform on the Internet. Right. Um, we wouldn't have people's friends. Right. And so um, I look at you know, what Mark has done is paving the way for us to be a company that right. is 100% focused on close friends and family. Right. Because ultimately, even the original version, you know, the original vision of Facebook platform was all about um, becoming this operating system, this identity platform for right. the internet, right? And the world. And so now they're becoming more and more of that, right? And, and they so couldn't become that if they maintained a closed system. I think maybe he yes. saw Twitter become open and the... And he became a little paranoid about, oh my God, if Twitter is open like this and people are responding to it, I've got to evolve Facebook. Well, to Mark's credit, if you go back even to the earliest days, yeah. Mark's always said that, you know, the, the mission of Facebook is to make the world more open. Right. And that's been, you know, that's been his mission since day right. one. And so... But Twitter did push them a little oh, bit. Oh, certainly. Yeah. I mean, Twitter innovated in that space um, undeniably quickly. Yeah. Um, you Default know, public. Arguably pioneered that, you know, and, yeah. um, you know, I think that's how the industry works, you know? Yeah. And so... Um, so he leaves it behind, but does it mean it's any less valuable? No. Yeah. So personal question, um, what is your relationship like with Mark now that you're a competitor? We're friends on path. <laughs> You're friends on that? Um, Does he use it? Yeah, I mean, he's been actually. I mean, Mark's a great supporter. Um, he's always given. He gives me great advice. He's is he a, an investor? No, he doesn't do much investing on his yeah. own. Uh, at least not that I know of. Um, he's, you know, he's always been a great inspiration. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think that his ability to think long term and to really drive, you know, a, a company and a culture which is focused on the long term. Yeah. Is really uh, impressive, and it's, I, you know, he'll even yeah. say that he'll even say that publicly that right. he wishes, you know, I think I wish and sounds like he wishes that the the valley would would focus long term more often yeah and so I, I really respect that about mark and i also just respect that he is so product product focused and right. so you know i respect his product opinion um, we have lots of conversations about products and things so right. um you so know. it's not like there's a falling out because you're all of a sudden you left facebook to create what in your mind is a better mousetrap no i don't yeah. i don't think that all think so at all and yeah. in fact you know They've been very supportive of us, um, you know. In fact, uh, they they just released this um, new list feature, which mm -hmm. um, creates a close friends list for everyone right. on Facebook. And one of the coolest things that they did was um, actually create an API for that, so ah. it makes it easier for us to actually operate uh, on top of the Facebook platform in in the same realm that mm -hmm. we want to operate in the rest of the world. Uh, so, so it's actually been, uh, you know, I think that. Ultimately, the vision there is to become this identity platform, and I know that that's sort of hard to conceptualize. But um, you know, I think there's a huge opportunity in both uh, what we're doing from a horizontal perspective. You know, for close friends and family, just right. focusing on that. I think there's a lot of vertical opportunities too, all over the platform, and you see this happening. Um, 
So uh, I think that, you know, um, Facebook's actually quite interested in ensuring that there's lots of different flowers blooming in various different directions on top of what they're doing. What do you think is the key? Um, as an, you know, if you're, a, you're essentially a first-time entrepreneur, although you've been in it, one of the most entrepreneurial, uh, well, two of the most entrepreneurial companies in existence, Apple and. Yeah. Obviously, you came into Apple when it was well past, you know, the thousand-person mark, but you came into Facebook Certainly. very early. Um your estimation, I mean, what's the critical founder uh, attributes? What, is the, what, are, what are founders, and there's a lot of you know, aspiring founders who listen to the program, what, what do they need to keep in mind when they start their journey? I mean, this is your first journey, I mean, yeah. and it's been a hell of a ride. You had a buyout offer from Google <laughs> for $100 million. I mean, you're independently wealthy from the Facebook shares um, that you acquired, I'm sure, as a 30th employee, but that's got to be tempting, too. Were you tempted by the Google offer? Uh, I wish I could comment on that. Uh, oh, right. I'm sorry. That's that. I thought that was confirmed. Uh, uh, oh, yeah. if it was, well, let's assume you've had some offer from somebody at some time. Uh, you're not interested in selling the company, ever. I think that. Uh, so, for ta- I guess for giving advice, yeah. Um, the best way to think about your vision is that <clears throat> um, it. Back to the William Gibson quote, right? Yeah. The future is here. It's just not evenly distributed yet. So generally, uh, if you've built a product and you know that it's good, it's always going to take a lot of time to get it to everybody, right? And so staying focused on building that product and getting it to everyone and listening to your customers and building and building and building for your customers is like the most important thing you can do. And I think what ends up happening more often than not is that people – you know, get some success from their first thing. They end up spending a lot of time out of the office and not focusing on just gathering feedback and going back and continuing to build the product. Um, you know, they go to conferences and they speak at everything. And, yep. You know, rather than staying focused. And so, you know, if I learned one thing from Steve Jobs, it was just focus, right? right. Pick one thing, focus on it, right? And um, stay in the problem long enough to where you find the right solutions, right? Um, and I think that that's one of the most important pieces of um, advice that I can give, I guess, is just that um, it's all, it's going to take time to solve hard problems. And you have to stay in the problem long enough to get to the most simple solution. Simplicity takes time. Um, you can't produce simplicity um, by in a weekend. You know, It's easy to throw a prototype in a weekend, but to create a truly simple, truly beautiful solution to a very hard problem, it takes time. Um, I guess that would be the first thing I would say. Um, The other thing is just that um, as a founder uh, and a leader, you end up having to do a lot of editing. Um, There'll be a lot of ideas and a lot of people um, and a lot of uh, things going on in your startup. And you'll have a co-founder. And uh, you end up having to have uh, a lot of really hard conversations. And... One of my favorite pieces of advice to people is that I think that your success in life is directly related to the number of hard conversations you're willing to have. Wow. Um, because the hardest conversations, whether it's letting somebody go or you know, really fighting for the right idea or fighting for the thing that's right or sticking to your word when you make a deal, um, those are the hardest things to do. And um, it's always feels like when you're going into one of those situations that it's going to uh, be bad on the other side. But and it always turns out to be the it's opposite. It's always better, right? <laughs> yeah, it's an incredible cathartic thing. And I think the more you can go through that and experience that and get better at it, um, the more you can operate you know, um, and create and make more things. Um, because wow. it's, it's, it's hard to affect change, you know? Yeah, so it certainly is. I think that, that those two things are pretty important. This we're gonna, is we're gonna wrap. I have one thing I want to figure out okay. before we get wrap here. What? Because I have a lot of people asking. By the way, that to, was my f- to connect perfect on moment path. to wrap. By the way, I know, like, but I got I got to get this <laughs> one in there. You just ruined the perfect wrap, Tyler. <laughs> what is? Is there an internal name for the list of people who are trying to add you on path? Because I would love to officially coin the phrase or name for that list. The people who are aspiring to have you as yes. a, a friend. So. I don't think that we're yet doing a good enough job 
at managing the line for you. I, I we, think we of it as a, a line. Name for I it. think of it as a line. You know, yeah, it's okay. the line to get in, right? Um, you could call it your list of requests. Your 151s. Yeah. I mean, there's there's a bunch of ways you could describe it, but I think of it as a, a line, you know, and, and we it's have to do a better job. Yeah, a queue. It, it, we have to do a better job, I think, in helping queue. you manage that queue. I yeah. have so many people waiting uh, in my queue. And then the other thing I'm finding is I people, I've asked to add people, and I think that they forget that they were asked. There's no, like list of like here's everybody in order that they asked you or something we yet. need to add that yeah we're doing a bunch the... of work actually right now on that so yeah we, we're getting we're getting this feedback what has the, um, quite a bit yeah what is the um massive uh uptick been like i mean i know from my feed it yeah. went from zero to hero it went from shervin to at least 40 people contributing a day so i had a personal 40x it's big <laughs> what's the number i mean give us give us some i mean this is uh this is where you can really uh help the program give us some number give us some you're obsessing about this i mean yeah you, how many active users how many what kind of increase of percentage wise did you see one to two <clears throat> we've seen around a 10x um or more increase in active users wow um it's actually more than that you know and it, we didn't expect it you know we we really tried to build a great product. Um, halfway through the year, we just kind of decided that we were going to give it a give it our honest shot, um, and we expected it to be, you know, a better version than the first one. But we weren't expecting it to to take off. When like you it has. say we were going to give it another shot, I almost hear in that like a final shot. W well, was as, this a, a, as a founder, you know, you you end up in these funding cycles, right? Uh -huh. Where you where you have you know you have a certain runway and you have a certain you really, you really have to time your releases in a, yeah. in a way that's pretty strategic. And so, um, you know, we wanted to get one good product out this year, and um, you know, wow. we knew to, we knew we needed to do it before Christmas and ho the holidays, right? And, um, you know, and uh, you know, we, we've got a we've got a uh, some great investors, and we've got a you know, we're 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 pretty good, but we wanted to get something out this year and and give it a real you has know, this a real made two point oh the uh, funding cycle and the and the sort of uh, just explode for you guys. I would think that sophisticated investors would look at, holy cow, my feed has just exploded with activity. This is the real deal. Don't count Dave out. Yeah, we have a lot of interest. I mean, from press and you know uh, uh, investors and users. Um, you know, it, it's going quite well. So I it's, tell, it's, I'm telling people, this is, I think, what you've done in. I don't want to say resuscitating, but the product was, for all intents and purposes, in people's minds, flatlined. People wrote you off, Dave. I really think they did. And I know you probably don't hear that, but I, you probably felt that on some level. And you came back and you gave everybody the big F you. I don't know any other way to say it. Like, this product is brilliant. It is so well designed. It is the most beautiful app on my phone. And it's the most beautiful, elegant social network experience I've had, and I am a student of the 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 um, the space. It is gorgeous, and I just think you you really deserve tremendous credit. One entrepreneur to another, really sincerely, it, it's inspired me to say you you were one product release away from greatness. And I'm I I've had the conversation with two or three of my angel investors. Look at Path. They held on. They released something great, and the whole thing exploded yeah my my advice to the entrepreneurs that are going through the same thing is just you know stop going to conferences uh stay in your office you know talk to your users um try to figure out what people are doing with 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 the the seed of the vision that you're trying to create and just stay in the problem and um and and make the next version you know and and do it you know uh just stay in it yeah, that's the most important thing is stay in it. it. I think it's almost important to feel the pain, you know, of that. It is. You, you have got to your stay ass in it. Kicked. Yeah, you got your ass kicked. But that's I mean, where it comes from, right? Like, did you it, have to did stay you get in fired? It. Did you get like? What, did you have a moment? Where you're just like, you know, I will show everybody who's doubting me. Did you have that rocky moment, or was it just, I I gotta do this for myself? I mean, I think it's when you're an entrepreneur. 
and you've got a co-founder and you've partners and investors and uh, users that are counting on you, it, you have a responsibility. It was Geary. It was your it was your honor. Yeah, I mean it's 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 really a responsibility, and wow. I think you have a responsibility to give it an honest try. And yeah. sometimes it fails, right? right. Like it could have failed, and um, you know, but at least we gave it an honest try, right? And I think that you know, as an angel investor, you'll probably say the same thing: is as long as you know the entrepreneurs are giving sure. it an honest try, you, you you sort of you you you. You, you actually are happy for them if they fail and they gave it an honest try. Right? Absolutely. And you'll invest in them again. Um, but I think that if uh, that's all it is, is you have to give it the honest try, right? Yeah. Did, did your confidence stem from a sort of certitude that friend fatigue was a very real thing that was going to be happening in the social dynamic? Tyler, I just had a great, that was a great rap and you have to throw in yeah. another question. Go ahead, Tyler. Um, <laughs> you said it. The, the, you said earlier in the program, you, people weren't ready yet. There was this extrapolation, the process that needed to occur. Now they're, they're kind of more ready. You, you referenced the hardware the reason, element, but there's also the social element of that curve. Are you saying it's external things well, that made past friend fatigue successful? It's a very real thing, and that's why Facebook makes the <laughs> close friend option now, because they they're aware. Like That's that, not the reason. Well, I'm, I'm asking. The reason is the product is elegant and superior. I know it is. That's what people are and attracted that, to. I don't me, think the re- there's that much the re- difference. In for the me, it's you, not, what do you think? Have you had this discussion internally? Is it us or is it the market? The beautiful thing about Patho, besides that it is the most beautiful product on your phone, it's the most emotional app on your phone by far. Concur. This experience that we're having, right. there's three of us, uh, yeah. this is a deeply engaging, intimate conversation. Right. Right. And that's how the family dinner table works. Right. Right. And when you go home and you sit down at your parents' dinner table and you have this you know, uh, emotional open, uh, you know, very vulnerable conversation. Yeah. Those are, you know, those are important conversations in people's lives. And, you know, um, I think that that's always going to be the case. And if you were to take a photo of your family dinner and put it on the internet, it immediately devalues the experience, right? Because people feel like, why, why'd you share that? You know? And, um, there's other experiences that are made for sharing. right? Right. But for that experience, you know, the intimate conversation, whether it's with your family or just your wife, like that's the most um, deeply emotionally engaging experiences that you can have. If a single person enters that, that's not family, it changes everything. Yeah. Right? And so it's, it's cold water. It's human. Yeah. Right. And so I think that um, that's the thing that we're going after is this warm very human experience that exists around the dinner table with everyone's families and um, the set of people that have been invited there. Well, it's, it's the sharing you do that isn't motivated by social bragging, which is... It's, it's the sharing it's that, the that's motivated I, by yeah. emotional health. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Wow. And, hap- and happiness. Yeah. I have to, I'm going to memorialize this on my pen. <laughs> um, this has been uh, one of the best episodes of the program ever. Dave, I truly thank you for your honesty on the program. Anytime. Um, You've been an inspiration to me. Uh, I'm taking notes watching you Feelings on the journey. Mutual. Yeah. Uh, and um, just continued success. And for God's sake, don't go to any goddamn conferences. Let's see. I If you can do this in 2.0, I can't wait for 3.0. Continued <laughs> we'll success. Keep trying. Yeah. To you and your team. And thank you to my sponsor, Squarespace and GoToMeeting. If ever there was a time for you guys to go patronize those two great products, this would be the time. I mean, look at this amazing program that would not exist without the love and support of Squarespace and go to meeting. Thank you so much to my friends at CNET. Tyler, thank you for making me do three endings of the show. You know, like I'm, I'm here. <laughs> One more as thing, a, Dave. <laughs> I am, don't do it. I am a maestro, Tyler, of trying to have this. Emo- I am the path of uh, radio hosts. And the sociopath. I sociopath. Sociopath. <laughs> I, I, I crescendo this thing. Yeah. Th- I had to I crescendo it two or three times, yeah. and you got to come in here with your and your two cents. You wouldn't have got all the, of a sudden. Uh, you wouldn't you, have got the that's family true, that's dinner. True. I, you know what? You're right, Tyler. You, you always had great value. Thank you, Tyler, for uh, traveling the world with me and keeping me from being lonely. That's your job, Tyler. So just hang out. Tyler's. Jo- I'm gonna get business cards for you. He's a good man. Keep Jason from being lonely. Cards. <laughs> that's it. You're my like personal path, Tyler. Uh, I love you, Tyler. We'll see everybody next time on this week in startups. Thanks, CNET. 